Hey gang, welcome back. We're working on getting ready for exam number three. We're talking about combined loads. I find this to be, well, students find this to be one of the most confusing topics there is. So let's see if we can clear this up a little bit, okay? We have a solid pipe construction of two inch diameter. Kind of makes a big elbow there. Find the state of stress at point A, which means we need to draw us a stress element for point A um, that's going to reflect all of these loads and what it does over there at point A on that plane. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is let's sketch that plane that point A is on. There it is. Okay. And point A is down here. I'm going to say down here. Okay. Cause this is like, okay, this is like positive X. And then this direction over here would be the Y. Okay. And there's point A. Okay, now what we've got here is one, two, three forces, and we've got one moment, one burrito force, okay? What are those things going to do to that plane? Now remember, a force can do one of four things to a plane. It can squeeze it or stretch it. It can, it can put, uh, bend it, right? Bending moment. It can shear it, shear force V, or it can twist it, torsion, torque, right? So for each one of those forks, we have, forces, not forts, each one of those forces, we gotta see what it does to our point A over here, okay? So let's just start with the 75, okay? The 75 is in the X direction. It's in this direction here, whoop. Okay? And so that's just gonna put a shear force across that face. So I'm just going to draw it like that, a shear force. Does it do anything else? Okay, let's see. Does it cause any torsion? Ooh, it does, doesn't it? It's going to cause a twisting like this. And how big is that? 75 times 5. Okay, I'm going to do everything in feet pounds here. 75 times 5. How much is that? 75 times 5. 375. Okay. Does it cause any compression? Any P over A kind of stress? No, it does not. Okay. It does not. What else does it, could it cause? Does it cause any bending? Okay. The answer is yes. This force pulling in the positive X is going to bend that whole thing um, towards you, right? Let me get you a little visual. Okay. Here's my noodle. Okay. The 75 is over here on the end. So pulling that way, it's going to bend it like that. Okay. Towards you. Okay. So that's going to put a bending across this face like that. And how big is that? That's 75 times four. That's uh, what? 300, huh? Okay, there's that guy. So that one force did three things. The only one it didn't cause was P over A. Okay, next, the 50. What does it cause? Well, it's pressing straight down, so it's going to cause a compression. I'm going to put a negative right in the middle because it's compressing it straight down 50 pounds, right? Like that, right? That's what that dot means. Okay. What else is it doing? Does it cause any twisting? Mm, no. Does it cause any shear? No. Does it cause any bending? Yes. It's going to cause bending this way across the face, okay? And it's 50 times how far away? Five. So that's 250 foot pounds. Okay. There's that one. This is a, remember what we called this before? Call this our effect map, right? So we're just getting all the effects of these different forces on that plane where point A lives, right? Next, the 80 pounds. Okay. Pulling in the Y direction. Well, number one, that's going to just put a shear across that face like that. Okay. Okay. 
What else is it going to do? Is it going to cause any twisting, torsion? Mm, no. Is it going to cause any elongation or compression? Mm, no. Is it going to cause any bending? Yes, right? And it's going to bend it again. It's going to bend it uh, like that, right? Okay. It's going to bend it right here. Whoop. Same as that guy, except it's going to be 80 times 4, which is 320 foot pounds. Okay. There's that guy. Okay. And all of his effects. What about the burrito force? The burrito force just does one thing, right? And it is that burrito force is bending the whole system that way into the negative around the Y axis, right? Around the Y. So around the Y means it's doing this number right here. And how big is it? 100. Okay, and there's everything. Now, let's simplify, okay, let's simplify. Okay, here I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay, in the middle, I'm gonna leave my minus 50. Okay, here's point A. I've got an 80. I've got a 75. Okay, I've got the torsion, that's not gonna change. 375. Now, these two guys here are going in the same direction as bending around the X there. And so I'm going to add those two together. And those two were um, 320 and 250. So that's 570. Okay. And then these two go together, except I've got 300 down and 100 up. That's going to leave me with a net of... 200 around that uh, y-axis, okay? Okay, I think we're there. Well, that's the effect on, on that graph. So let's do this, okay? We got we got we two things. Okay, there's our stress element. For point A, okay? All right, so what we're gonna have here is st normal stress and shear stress, okay? So how are we gonna calculate that? Changing colors. Okay, let's do normal stress first. Sigma equals, okay? So point A, what are we doing here? Point A, let's talk, here's point A, okay? We got an axis this way, and we got an axis this way, okay? So we're talking normal stress first, so that can come from either one or two things, MC over I or P over A. Does point A have any P over A? Yes, there's 50 squishing it right there, okay? So that's gonna be negative 50, because it's compression, right, divided by uh, the area, which is pi times r, two inch diameter, so r is one squared, right? So this part here is the p over a portion, okay, a point a. And then what about the mc over i portion? Okay. Now, what about the 570? It's bending, it's, here's, because noodles help, don't they? It's bending the whole thing this way, okay? Now, point a, lives down here on the bottom, doesn't he? So if I'm bending this way, where's point A? On the neutral axis. And so guess what? The stress from the 570 for point A is zero, okay? Now what about this one that's bending it down, okay? Now point A lives on the bottom. Is point A in tension or compression from bending? Compression, right? So minus, okay, MC over I, M, 200 foot pounds. Now, wait a minute, what was this in over here? This was in pounds, but
But this down here is in inches squared, isn't it? So we probably need to make sure that we got inches over here also, right? So let's just, uh, I don't know, let's do this. A foot is 12 inches, and now it's in inches, okay? So there's M. C, distance from the neutral axis to, the, to point A, which is a radius, which is one inch, divided by I, which is pi on four, R to the fourth, inches to the fourth, right? And so we're going to get two inches there and two out of that, and that's going to give us in pounds over inches squared. It's going to be in PSI, isn't it? Okay. PSI. So let's see what we get here. 50 divided by pi is 15.92 divided by one squared. Oh, yeah, that's just still one, isn't it? Okay. So 200 times 12 equals times 1 divided by 1 to the 4th um, times 4 equals divided by pi equals 3055.77, which means plus 15.92, 30. 71.69, okay, to the negative PSI, or 3.1 KSI to the negative, right? Now, what does negative mean? Negative means he's in compression, doesn't it? Okay, 3.1 KSI. Now, what about this way over here in the opposite direction? This is sigma Y equals, well, it's zero. There's nothing on the pipe that's squishing it this way. Everything was in this direction, nothing in that direction, okay? So that's zero. Now, all we gotta do now is calculate what is our tau values here, okay? Now, same, here we had, we had P over A and we had MC over I for calculating sigma. I'm gonna have two things possible to calculate tau, and that is torsion, tau from torsion, and tau from transverse shear. Okay, so let's see if we can figure that out. So tau is equal to, okay, the torsion on point A, okay? Torsion is 375, it's TC over J in it. This is the TC over J part. 375, again, this is in foot pounds. Let's make it in inches, okay? And that'll get rid of the feets, the feets is TC, what's C? One, that's that distance from the neutral axis to the outside of the part divided by J, the polar moment of inertia, which is pi over two R to the fourth, okay? Now, what else do we have here, okay? Well, look here, we've got shear in the 75, okay? The 75, so how much VQ over IT transverse shear does that make at point A, okay? Well, if I'm in the, this direction, that means that point A, how much area is above point A? Zero. From the 75, the 75 for the shear force, it's gonna make no transverse shear because Q would be equal to zero, okay? Now the 80, the 80, and you always go perpendicular to the force, okay? The 80 goes this way, and so here, is the amount of area above point A. So there is going to be a Q this time. What is Q for that shape there? Well, Q is equal to, number one, the area, which is pi r squared divided by two, right? The area times the centroid, right? It's y bar times A. 
And the centroid for half a circle is 4r over 3 pi. Okay, I gotta multiply those two things together to get q. Well, let's see, the pi's are gonna go away. The two goes into there, makes a two. The ones don't do anything, and so I've got what? Two thirds equals q. Okay, that's good. And that's inches to the fourth. Okay, two divided by three. Okay. Now, let's do this. So the next part here, now this is pushing this way, right? The 80 is going this way. So on point A, the shear from VQ over IT is going this direction, whereas the torsion is going this way. So guess what? These two need to have opposite signs, okay? Because they are going in opposite directions. So this is V, what's the shear force? 80 pounds times Q, two-thirds, inches to the fourth, divided by I, pi over four, R to the fourth, times T, the thickness. How thick is it? I have to shear through the whole entire thickness, which is two inches. Okay? And that's going to give us the value for tau. So, 375 times 12 times 1. I just put times 1 in my calculator, y'all. That was bad. Times 2 divided by pi and then divided by 1 again, right? So this number here is 2864.5. Eight, okay, and that's PSI or 2.8 KSI, right? And then this little bit over here is how much is that? 80 times 0.66667 equals divided by 2 equals uh, times 4 equals divided by pi equals. 33.95. So, this guy here is going to put a lot more shear on A going that way than this is. So the net shear is going to be going in this direction at point A. Okay? So, this is not going to make much difference, is it? 2864.8 minus 33.95 equals 2830.85. PSI or 2.83 KSI, okay? So since the main shear forces are pushing this direction, it's like all of these forces here are pushing, uh, let's see, this way, right? Across point A. So if it pushes that way, think about, here's a little point A. This is kind of the way I think about those little directions. If all the forces are pushing that way, right, the shear, then the direction goes this way, opposite, and then on the other side, the other way, and then down at the bottom, again, it would go that way at the reaction at the base. So I just kind of think about my little stress element being there at point A. So the shear goes this way, so then it would have to go this way. That gets me the direction on my stress element this way and that way. And so the magnitude is 2.83, but a lot of times students have trouble coming up with what is the direction those stress arrows go, okay? So that's how you find the uh, stress element. Boy, that effect map sure does help, okay? All right, I hope this gets you good on combined loads. Stay tuned, we'll go and do whatever the next uh, test study question is, so hang on.